welcome to this very mighty program again. And I am talking about the coming of the Messiah and the latter glory of Jehovah that has come to prepare the church, to prepare for the coming of the Messiah, to prepare the way, the way that you see in Isaiah chapter 40 verses 1 to 5, to prepare the highway that is celebrated in Isaiah chapter 35 verses 8 and 9. The highway of holiness. To shepherd the church back into the highway of holiness. Precious people, Jehovah, when he sent his glory, that tremendous glory that Moses encountered when he came down himself. When Moses encountered the glory of the Lord, his mission changed from shepherding the sheep of Jethro, his father-in-law, and his identity also changed, and he became a shepherd of the sheep of Jehovah. He went to shepherd Israel. His identity and mission changed. When Saul encountered the glory, his identity and mission changed. He became Paul and became not the persecutor of Christians, but the shepherd of Christians, the shepherd of the sheep. When Israel encountered this same glory, the cloud of glory, and they followed, their identity and mission changed. They became the people whose God is Jehovah. They became the covenant people of the Lord. And today we see that the glory has arrived. If the church will hearken to the obedience of God that this glory announces, she will also become the church whose God is Jehovah. Precious people, Exodus 18, verse 20, he says, Then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, and their sin so grievous, that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. Listen to me, precious people. The Lord is saying that the outcry out of the sin that had been commissioned, perpetrated by the people in Sodom and Gomorrah, he says the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah was so great. Why? Because he says their sin had become so grievous. And so that outcry was so great and it reached Jehovah himself in heaven. And the Lord is saying here that because that outcry was so much and you can imagine who was crying? It must have been Lot and his family. Just a remnant, handful of holy people. They must have been crying to the Lord, Lord, when will you deliver us from this? From Sodom and Gomorrah. It compelled the Lord to come down himself. Not to send anybody. Not to send an angel. Not to send a heavenly host. Not to send an archangel. Not to send the Messiah. Calm down himself. Oh, how grievous must that sin have been? For God himself to leave his throne and come down and check it out for himself. Precious people. And we remember what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. When the Lord came. 
and indeed confirmed that the level of sin that was in Sodom and Gomorrah was equal to the level of outcry that he had received from his throne. Now look here, precious people. The Lord has again come down himself. On that December 31st, the year 2012, at that grand mega revival meeting in Kisumu, the prophecy I had given on November 21st, 2012, we saw the fulfillment when the cloud of God himself came down. And in a vision, he wrote across the sky and spoke by voice and he said, tabernacled, meaning I am now tabernacled. I am now present. I am now dwelling. I am now inside the house. I myself. Ah. Tell me, precious people, the same God that came down to check on the level of sin when there was a humongous outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah. Tell me one thing. Could it be? Could it be that in this day and age, the level of sin that has been committed in the church, that has been commissioned in the church, in the believers, in salvation, could it be that there is a woman in the church, one woman, a man, and they are trying to live a holy life, but they are looking at the abomination that is happening in the church, and they are crying to the Lord, Lord, when will you bring a holy church? When will you deliver us? Could it be that God has come down to probe, to investigate by himself, to find out if the level of outcry is going to be equal to the level of sin in the church, then he will know what to do. You know what that means. You know what that means when the Lord says, then I will know what to do. That is not a good place. Tell me, tell me one thing. When you look at homosexuality and lesbianism in the church today, the false prophets selling the blood of Jesus, false apostles have turned the church into a money-making machine, money-making, preaching money, the gospel of the stomach, gospel of flesh. When you see the way the church has become the place for boys and men to go find a good girl. When you see the church, what it has become as the place for women to go find a good boy, a good man for sexual sin. When you see the pornography among pastors, alcohol, everything, cigarettes. When you see the abomination, the sin in the church, tell me, hasn't this generation committed the same sin of Sodom and Gomorrah? Hasn't this generation committed the same abomination 
the same sin so grievous as the Lord says, so grievous. Hasn't this generation committed even two times so grievous than Sodom and Gomorrah? Precious people, let us be careful. Let us be careful. I am warning the church to be careful. This is the same Jehovah who judged the sin so grievous in Sodom and Gomorrah. And I know he has come to see for himself, to investigate it out. If the level of outcry and the level of sin in the church are going to be equal, he will judge. He will judge the church. He will take only those that have been the remnant righteous into rapture. And he will judge the rest. That means he's calling for repentance. Remember Korah, the rebellion of Korah, the rebellion of Dathan, and Abiram, when they tried to contest the voice of God. When they tried to contest Moses. Hasn't that happened in today's church? And remember what the Lord did unto them. He judged them. He opened the earth and swallowed them. They went down under towards hell. While everybody is preparing to go up and above. This is indeed the obvious hour of repentance right from Israel to the ends of the earth. Shalom. If you know that this message has touched you and you know that you are not right with the Lord, you are within the same bracket of those who have committed the sin so grievous, pornography, Lasting at women in the streets. The tight trousers that show their bodies in the church. Tight skirts that show their bodies in the church. Immoral dressing essentially. All these things I've talked about. Lukewarmness. If you know that this is you. Please. Repeat this prayer with me. Say dear Jesus. I repent today and reject sin. Lead me into righteousness. I receive you as Lord and Savior. Please protect me in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If you have said that prayer, Behold, a new day has begun with your life. The Bible says you become a new creation before the Lord. And begin reading the book of John. When you got the Bible, read the book of John. Begin with the chapters on the book of John. John chapter 1. Read the entire book of John. The message of salvation. And the Lord will help you. Walk in the Holy Spirit. Change your life. Throw out the things that constitute sin, contamination, pollution, yeast in your lives. Even as a pastor, it's time to clean up your gospel. Clean up your church. It does not matter whether they try to leave the church. Don't change the message. Continue to preach the message of the kingdom of God. The message of the blood and the cross. Shalom. Prepare the way. The Messiah is coming. Return to the highway of holiness.